Hello everybody and welcome to this mega PowerBook G4 upgrade video. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, we unboxed this 17 inch top of the line PowerBook G4 on the channel a few months ago. And it is basically the most balls to the wall, most up to date, latest PowerPC laptop ever made. And uh, I bought it basically with the sole intention of making it one of the most badass PowerBook G4s on the planet. And um, that is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be stripping the laptop down, replacing the decade old thermal paste, uh, making sure everything is working in tip top order. And um, then we're gonna be replacing the storage and mechanical hardware with the MSATA SSD. We're gonna be upgrading the RAM to two gigabytes of DDR2 memory. And we're gonna be replacing the completely dilapidated battery with a brand spanking new one. We're gonna be using a 128 gigabyte Hynix MSATA SSD inside the Lycom ST173 adapter. And uh, this adapter is a great bit of kit. Um, it's pretty much perfect for the PowerBook G4. Um, it has onboard garbage collection, which is very, very important to keep everything taken over nice and quickly as uh, Leopard doesn't support trim. And it also has the Marvel S8 or ST, I'll, 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 put, it, I'll put the model number on, on screen now, but the general consensus is it's pretty much the best chip you can go for um, when installing an MSAT or SSD in one of these PowerPC Macs. The RAM is a pretty standard affair. Um, we're just going to be using two one gig sticks of uh, DDR2, 333 megahertz. Um, two gigs of RAM with Leopard should absolutely fly. And then to top the whole setup off, I have managed to get hold of a boxed mint condition Apple Firewire EyeSight webcam um, with all of its original documentation and with the original mounts, which means um, we'll be able to clip it directly on top of our PowerBook G4. And with that little intro out of the way then guys, let's get on with the upgrades. As the first thing we're gonna be doing is replacing the thermal paste in this machine, pretty much every single component needs to be ripped out. This includes the old battery and the two sticks of DDR2 memory that we're gonna be replacing, the upper case assembly, the stereo speakers, the optical drive, and of course, the logic board itself. The whole disassembly process took about 20 minutes to complete, and all things considered, it wasn't too much hassle at all. Now that the logic board is out and the copper heat sink pads are exposed, we can clean off the nasty 10-year-old thermal muck that Apple put on there and replace it with some nice, fresh Arctic MX4. Then, with the thermal paste all sorted, the logic board can go back in and the machine can, for the most part, be reassembled. With the PowerBook back in one piece, we can begin to install our upgrades, the first of which being the SSD. The existing mechanical hard drive is easily removed with four screws, and the process of clipping the MSAT or SSD into the ID adapter absolutely just could not have been any simpler. With the SSD installed in the adapter and the adapter fixed to the PowerBook's bracket, it's a simple case of dropping our new drive into place and screwing it in. Ridiculously easy. So we're on the home stretch and the penultimate upgrade is the memory. Two one gigabyte sticks of DDR2 RAM maxes out this little power book and should make multitasking pretty easy going under Leopard. And last but not least, our brand new first party Apple replacement battery can be slotted into place. So at this point with all of the upgrades installed, I took the power book away, installed a fresh copy of OS X Leopard onto the newly installed SSD and basically went through the process of setting the machine up exactly how I want it. To cover my web browser needs, I installed both 10 for Fox and Leopard WebKit to get the best of both worlds. For video and media playback, I installed the legendary and newly cracked Core Player, along with VLC Media Player to cover the more obscure codecs that Core Player doesn't get on too well with. For productivity, I installed Microsoft Office 2004 and iWork 09. I installed Office for compatibility reasons more than anything, and then iWork for my general day-to-day -day usage. And lastly, my little must-have utilities that I always, without fail, install on my PowerPC Max. Menu meters for keeping track of the CPU and memory usage, temperature monitor for obviously keeping tabs on how hot the machine is running, and then G4 fan control, which does exactly what it says on the tin and hands me complete control over the PowerBook's fans. And now with everything set up exactly how I want it, we can get testing. Geekbench of course tests both the system's CPU and memory and calculates its score off a baseline of 1000 which was set by a single 1.6 GHz PowerMac G5. Bearing that in mind, as you can see our monster PowerBook scores 973. For a single processor PowerPC G4 machine, that is absolutely incredible. I'm not going to lie though, I was really hoping it would tick over the 1000 mark, but either way it is still a killer score. 
Next up, to test the SSD, I ran Xbench's disk speed test. Now, if you were around a few years back, I upgraded a similar spec 15 inch PowerBook G4 with a cheap Chinese IDE SSD. And we're gonna be using that as a benchmark to see how well this MSATA solution works. The Kingspec IDE SSD, as you can see, scored just under 50 as an overall score. Not bad at all, and still a huge upgrade over the stock Apple mechanical drive, which scored just under 20 points. So brace yourselves for this. The MSATA SSD in our PowerBook G4 scored an unbelievable 208.69. That is 4.2 times better than the Kingspec SSD, and 11 times better than the stock hard drive. And looking at the sequential and random scores as well, further confirms that this MSATA to ID method blows pretty much every other solution out of the water. Let's move on from the SSD then and look at how well this machine handles gaming. This is World of Goo running at the PowerBook's native resolution of 1680 by 1050. And as you can see, it is handling it like an absolute champ. It's chugging along at a solid 30 frames per second and is looking damn pretty while doing so. And this is Halo Combat Evolved running at 720p on roughly medium settings. And again, as you can see, the mobility radio on 9700 in this machine is cutting through everything like butter. It does get a little on the choppy side when you've got a lot of explosions and particle effects going on, but for the majority of the time it runs at a completely smooth 30 FPS and is a really surprisingly enjoyable experience. Moving away from gaming, let's see how the PowerBook deals with HD video. This is a pretty bog standard 720p H.264 video running inside Core Player, and as you can see, it is running absolutely perfectly. Playing this video back in VLC is a best choppy, and it's pretty much a slideshow in QuickTime. This is the same video file, but this time at its native 1080p resolution. And while definitely watchable, it is dropping frames here and there. With that said though, before Core Player was cracked, if someone said to me that they could run a 1080p video file successfully on anything other than a Power Mac G5, I'd laugh in their face. So the fact that this is now possible and this little guy can pull it off reasonably well is pretty damn impressive in my book. So as you've seen in the last few minutes, I've been absolutely pushing this machine to its limits. And one of the most impressive things I've found is how unbelievably cool it manages to keep itself. I haven't even touched G4 fan control as I've yet to see the CPU top 55 degrees Celsius. People with older G4 laptops will testify how stupidly hot they ran under loads. So to see just how refined and efficient the G4 CPU got to at this point is really awesome. And as one last finishing touch, we can whip the beautifully designed Firewire EyeSight webcam out, clip it onto the PowerBook specific mount, and pop the metaphorical cherry on top of the cake to complete what I think has to be one of the most awesome PowerPC setups on the planet. And there we are, the finished product. And I think it is safe to say that this project has been a massive success. Um, it's just been awesome to record and film and stuff because I've been, I've been buying and selling these machines for years and years now. So to finally own pretty much the fastest, most insane, badass PowerBook G4 ever created um, feels damn good. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.